This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Today we're going to do a video here that explains how to calculate the area of a regular polygon. Um, we're going to do two different examples. So before we get into the examples, we should understand what a regular polygon is. If we're going to be throwing around that term regular, uh, we should talk about it. Now the definition is really simple. It is uh, a polygon that has uh, all of its sides congruent and all its internal angles are congruent. So we say it's an equiangular equilateral polygon. Okay, so it's kind of a very specific term. Uh, so in other words, uh, if we were to draw one of these regular polygons, it's going to be very symmetric. Like for instance, for our first problem that we're going to do, so this is going to be problem number one, uh, I'm going to put a hexagon, a regular hexagon and there I have it. I'll put that right there. So, uh, so what it means um, is that all of these sides, okay, which are usually in geometry, we mark them with like these little notches to in indicate that all of these sides are equal in, in measure, so that's equilateral. And then, of course, we'd say that all these angles, all of these angles here, all these internal angles are congruent as well. Okay, so that is the assumption that anytime you see that word regular, all of that, oops, forget that one there too, all of them are equal with each other. All right, so when we do our first problem, uh, what we're going to do is start with a regular hexagon that has a radius of 10 meters. So when we talk about the radius, we say the radius is the distance from the center of the uh, polygon, in this case hexagon, and oh yeah, and by the way, hexagon does mean six sides. Okay, so that is also a, a, another important part of this problem. So the hexagon has six sides, and what we're going to do is connect the vertex, one of these vertices, with the center, and we would say that that is the uh, radius. Now it turns out that there are six vertices, so I could draw six of those segments to draw six radii. Okay, so each one of those radii is going to be 10 meters, according to our first example. All right, so to progress, what we're going to do, since we're supposed to calculate the area, is I'm going to take one of these uh, triangles, okay, so I'm going to take one of those triangles, and I'm going to blow it up right here. So in other words, I'm going to draw this thing, and I'm going to, because we're going to be talking about it heavily, now uh, this is just a crude drawing. Okay, to represent that triangle right there. What we are going to do is calculate the area of that triangle. Now to do that, what we're going to have to do is get some dimensions uh, of this triangle. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to do is start with uh, the angle. I, I like to be able to figure out what is this angle here up at the top. All right, and in order for us to do this, let's reflect uh, on a circle. So if we were to draw a circle, another crude drawing of a circle here. We know that a circle has 360 degrees in it. So I want to know what are each one of these angles, right? If, if this is the center of the circle, again, it's a very bad drawing, but if this, is, this point represents the center of this circle, then I could figure out what all these angles are right here. I could figure out what all of those little angles are because I would take 360 degrees and I would separate it into six parts. So if we were to do the math on the side, we were to take 360 divided by 6, it turns out that each of these angles here at the top, right, all of those angles right at the top, are they have to be 60 degrees. Okay, so the angle here at the top of this triangle has got to be 60 degrees, except I am going to divide this triangle right down the center to form a right angle there. Okay, so if the whole angle is... Uh, 60 degrees, then I know that each one of the angles left and right of it is going to be 30 degrees. So I know this angle right there is 30, as is the angle right next to it. Uh, I could go into a proof about how this uh, triangle, which of course we know that that's 10 meters and this is 10 meters, I could go into a proof in how this isosceles triangle that when you draw an altitude uh, actually, it's an angle bisector. Right? I, I started by saying it's an angle bisector. I could say that that proved to you that the angle bisector is uh, a lot of things. Okay, it's it's 
going to be perpendicular, so it's a perpendicular bisector. It's going to it bisects the opposite sides. It's a median. It's a lot of things. Anyway, the important part is that we recognize the fact that that's a 30 degree angle. Now, if I want to calculate the area of this uh, figure, I just have to figure out what the area of this triangle is, since there's a lot of symmetry going on here. So, in other words, I need to know what this is, this distance is, I need to know what this distance is. All right, well, if if you know anything about triangles, we remember we know that that's a 60 degree angle. I know that since these two sides are equal, I know that these two base angles have to be equal. Okay, so I, I know that that little, oops, I know that that angle right here has got to be congruent to that angle because it's an isosceles triangle. And if the top angle is 60, these two angles also have to be 60, so it adds it to be uh, 180 degrees for this for this whole triangle, right? So the internal angle sum of any triangle has got to be 180 degrees. So it turns out that this has got to be a 60 degree angle. That's got to be a 60 degree angle. So there's a lot of things going on here. Th this is actually an equilateral triangle. So I know the whole distance down here is 10. Okay, so I know the whole distance down there is 10. If the whole distance there is 10, then I also know that this has to be 5, as does this. This has to be 5 also, right? Because this segment's going to divide this side into two equal parts. So that's 5, right? So I could calculate the area of that triangle, right? I, I could calculate the area of this triangle right here. All I have to do is figure out what the height of the triangle is. Okay, so I'm going to call that height x. And this is where a little trigonometry comes in, uh, or special triangle relationships. But I'm going to use trigonometry. So I know that I'm going to use the 30 degree angle and this x and the 10. And if I use a relationship called cosine, I know that the cosine of 30 degrees has to be equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Okay, adjacent over hypotenuse for cosine. So now if I m cross multiply like you do with any of these situations, I'm going to get x. x times 1 is x. 10 times the cosine of 30 degrees. So if I plug that into a calculator, it's going to give me the approximate answer. I did that earlier. And it turns out that that distance is around 8.66. Okay, so of course that would be meters. All right, so now I have the height of that triangle. And now the problem gets really, uh, definitely easier at this point. Because now I know that the area of the little right triangle, so I'm going to draw like a little right triangle here. So the area of this red right triangle is going to be base 5 times height, 8.66, divided by 2. Okay, because that's how you calculate a triangle. It's base times height divided by 2. And again, I did this earlier, and I get 21.65. Okay, that's the area of the right triangle. Now you're thinking, how many are of those little red right triangles would we have in this diagram? Well, if you imagine breaking up all of them into two parts like I did before, you'll notice that there's definitely going to be 12 triangles in this picture. It's 12 total. So if I multiply this answer that we just got, multiply that by 12, that's going to tell us what the whole area of the polygon is. So I'm going to put area of the poly, which of course I did this earlier, turns out to be 259.8. And of course this would be meters squared, just like that would be meters squared. And this is meters. Okay, so that's how we calculate it. So you basically break up the giant hexagon into little right triangles and calculate the area of each one. Once you find the area of each one, 
I'd like to find the area of one of those little red right triangles and multiply it by how many there are. All right, let's try one more. And of course, I'm going to speed it up for our second example. All right, for our second example, we are going to calculate the area of a regular pentagon that has a radius of 8 feet. All right, so first thing we need to do is draw a picture of this pentagon. All right, if it has a radius of 8, that means from the center to each one of these vertices is 8 units. So I'm trying my best to draw this straight. Okay, so let's assume those are all segments. They're a little wavy, did them by hand, but each one of them is 8 feet. They're all congruent to each other. All right, now the way this works again is you pretend there's a circle here at the center. And I'm using a circle because I want to calculate all of those little angles. So 360 divided by 5, that means that when I take a look at one of these triangles, it means that each one of these, well, let's see, that would be 360 divided by 5, and that would be 72 degrees. So the angle up here, right, the angle at the top, all of these central angles have an uh, angle of 72. But again, I'm going to divide this into two parts. So that's going to be 36, as is the one next to it. All right, uh, we know this distance here is 8. What we need to do is we need to figure out what this distance is from that point to there and we need to know the height of this triangle. Okay, so in order to calculate those I'm just going to use some trigonometry. So if I'm going to calculate x, the distance here x, I know it's sine. So the sine of 36 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, likewise if I do the cosine of 36 degrees. I know it's adjacent y over the hypotenuse 8. So I'm incorporating a little trigonometry to calculate for x and y. Uh, and of course, I'm going to cross multiply. So I cross multiply here. I get x equals 8 sine of 36. I'm getting y is 8 cosine 36. So I'm going to throw this into a calculator. And let's see, this I did earlier, it's 4.7. This I did earlier also, and it's approximately 6.5. Okay, so now I have those dimensions. So what I'm going to do now is calculate the area of this right triangle. Okay, so if I'm going to calculate the area of that right triangle, I'm going to use the formula. So the formula for a triangle is base... Well, let's see, the base is 4.7, the height is y, that's 6.5, and you divide it by 2. So you divide that all by 2. So you plug that into a calculator, and we're going to get about 15.3. 15.3 feet squared. So the question is, how many of these right triangles are there in the picture? So if you were to divide these all in half, right, divide them by two, that is, into two pieces, we will exactly be able to tell that, I'm just going to do half of them in red, so we could see that there are going to be, if you count up all of them, not just the red ones, all of them, you could see that there's going to be ten, ten of them. So if I have 10 of these triangles, I'm going to multiply it by 10. So that will tell me what the area of the polygon is. Okay, well, if I multiply, I'm going to get 153 feet squared. There you have it. So it's a fairly routine, simple process. This one was a little bit more complicated than our first example because we couldn't use an isosceles triangle relationships. Here, here, I didn't know what type of triangle this is. All I know is the 36 degree angle and the 8. So this is usually the way you are going to do all of the problems. Sure, I know there's another formula out there that other teachers use. It says that the area of the polygon is half the apothem times the perimeter, but it's a magic formula. You don't know where these things come from. 
This makes sense. You're using basic trig, you're using the area of a triangle and some common sense. And that's what you should do. Don't use formulas and pluck them out of nowhere. You should know where these things come from and how to do them. It's, it's mathematics and using bits and pieces from all over the place. All right, well, make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our other instructional videos, our interactive quizzes, and our text lessons. Take care.